Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Malia Martin. In the headlines, Dominica welcomes new ambassador from Switzerland, Her Excellency Rita Hameli Weschke. Progress on the first of two well pads for a 10 megawatt geothermal plant in Loda. And Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt to attend the Agri Investment Forum and Expo in Georgetown, Guyana. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. 2022 is census year. Be ready to give your full participation. Census? What is that, Granny? That is when all the people in the country are counted and other information collected so that we can have information about us. Well, Granny, you better make sure you take part. 2022 is census year. Be ready to give your full participation. For more information, please contact the Central Statistics Office of Dominica or follow us on Facebook. Welcome back. Dominica has welcomed the new ambassador of Switzerland, Her Excellency Rita Hameli Weschke. A virtual ceremony was held on Monday, May 16, where the credentials were presented to the President of Dominica, His Excellency Charles Savare. The letter of credence was issued by the Swiss Federal Council, which accredited Her Excellency Hameli Weschke the position of Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Switzerland to Dominica. The government and people of Dominica value the cordial relations, cooperation and bonds of friendship established between these two countries since formalizing diplomatic ties in 2005. As you are aware, our country's significant cooperation in sports through the Sports Aid Dominica project has resulted in an increased focus on sports education within Dominican schools. There is also a great focus on sports as a leisure activity to build healthier lives and also heighten awareness of, for competitive sports. Further, I note the continued contribution of projects through the Honorary Council of Switzerland, Andy Burkhardt, who is a personal friend of mine, that included the provision of US $10,000 worth of table tennis tables in 2019, and in 2020, the reconstruction project of school basketball courts to the tune of US 20,000. Dominica and Switzerland also share visa waiver agreements since 2015, which allows nationals of both countries visa free entry for short experiences. President Savar says Dominica looks forward to strengthening mutual cooperation in other areas of common interest. To build a better life for our people and even closer ties as Switzerland increases collaboration with the Caribbean community, CARICOM. Your Excellency, I further wish to also express the appreciation of the government and people of Dominica for Switzerland's post-disaster assistance provided to Dominica with the donation in 2021 of US $21,000 towards the construction of a pedestrian bridge in Pointe Michel to replace the one destroyed following the passage of Hurricane Maria in 2017. Additionally, I note your country's effort to address waste reduction post the passage of Tropical Storm Erica in 2015. President Savra reiterates government's commitment to working collaboratively with to undertake climate actions required under the Carbon Trading Agreement. The Carbon Trading Agreement signed between Dominica and Switzerland as per Article 6 of the agreement arrived at during the UN Climate Change Conference, COP26, held in Scotland in November of 2021. This mutually beneficial collaboration allows Switzerland to meet its Paris Agreement emissions pledges, in part through Dominica's carbon credits, and provides the opportunity for private Swiss investment in environmental projects in Dominica focused on initiatives such as the use of electric vehicles on the island and the advancement of the geothermal plant in an effort to reduce Dominica's dependency on fossil fuels. 
Dominica looks forward to providing continued support for the candidacy of Switzerland on various international bodies in appropriate circumstances where they are not competitors. The Comité Puetid Queo Kek, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, and the Division of Culture, continue their efforts to enhance the Creole language among students. The 12th Annual Primary Schools Creole Spelling Bee Competition was hosted on Wednesday, May 18, 2022. The Creole Spelling Bee got on the way this year with representation from six primary schools, the Christian Union Primary, the Baroness Patricia Scotland Primary, Penville Primary, St. Luke's Primary, Hoodford Hill Primary and the Atkinson Primary. Ahead of the competition, GIS spoke to President of Keck, Mr. Raymond Lawrence. He says the competition has proven to be successful thus far, as it motivates students at the level to do reading and writing in Creole. I think encouraged and sort of motivated schools in Dominica, especially the primary schools, to get their students to read, to study words, to spell the words and actually to know the meanings and to be able to use the words. So we're happy that one, it has gone on for such a long time and it has been a successful, a success story. And we are grateful to Ministry of Education, the schools, the students who have participated. Mr. Lawrence says the Quail Spelling Bee is an initiative adopted by Keck to introduce students to the language as part of the ministry's mission to teach Creole in schools. Three years ago, we collaborated, as Keck collaborated with the Ministry of Education to actually teach Creole in schools. So we started what we called a pilot project. Um, we started with about anywhere between 15 to 19 primary schools. Um, of course, hurricane, the hurricane affected and impacted the program. So it had to kind of try to pick up again after. And of course, COVID also affected the program as well. But the program is still going on, not with as many schools right now, but we're hoping that it will pick up again and that um, eventually the idea is that all primary schools, you know, uh, at, at all primary schools will be teaching Creole and then hopefully at all secondary schools and then hopefully at the state college and so on. It is the hope of the Comité Poetic Creole Keck team to sustain the Creole language in Dominica. Mr. Lawrence says the culture has to be passed down to other generations in order to make this a reality. If Creole has to survive, if it has to sort of remain vibrant and um, sort of current and relevant and, and being used in our culture and, and, and um, heritage then, we have to put in place things to try to help our young people to speak Creole and help the whole population to speak and understand the Creole. Since the inception of the Creole Spelling Bee competition in 2010, the organizers have hosted the competition every year with the exception of 2020 due to the surfacing of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The first Creole Spelling Bee winner was awarded to Kenya Ali of the St. Joseph Primary School. The Paybush Primary School has also managed to secure six wins thus far. Prime Minister the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt says the introduction of enhanced building codes for Dominica is a step in the right direction. Cabinet has reviewed existing building codes and approved the building regulations of 2022 to guide the country's post-Maria reconstruction efforts. The approved building codes are expected to strengthen the Physical Planning Act, which already contains requirements for any planning development. Seeking to protect people, lives and property is a fundamental responsibility of government. And um, I hope that we all, all of us recognize that this is not an imposition on us. It's really uh, protecting us and protecting our investments. The last thing you want to do is to go to the bank and take $400,000 and it's not built properly, you cannot stay in it, it's not safe, and you have to pay the bank $400,000. <laughs> you know, so let us understand that we're doing it for our own, for our own safety and our, and our own protection, and of course some safeguarding our investments um, that we're all making to, to improve our lives and improve the lives of our family and, and the community. And this is why I believe government itself 
must adhere to the codes, you know, and every permanent secretary must understand, and, and chief technical officer, it is your responsibility to ensure that before project commence, that you have in your hand, not, not somebody telling you, you have in your hand the approval from planning. Uh, because planning is both in an advisory capacity to the government and also a regulatory uh, capacity. And we have an opportunity to use them in the advisory capacity uh, to guide us in the, in, the, in the preparation of these projects and submission to planning. So it's a very important it's because government is building for the public use. And if you're going to build a school, we need to ensure that it is safe and I can protect our children. Just last week, government commissioned three new primary schools, which in themselves demonstrate the acceptable standards of resilience which the revamped building codes are expected to deliver. The reconstruction of these schools is part of our resilience building efforts in the post-Hurricane Maria period. In fact, since the hurricane, which impacted over 90% of our physical structures, we have sought to rebuild in keeping with more stringent construction codes. Dominica, we know, is vulnerable to a wide range of natural hazard, hazards. The most common are tropical storms and hurricanes. However, the island is vulnerable to all the disasters caused by floods, volcanoes, landslides, rock slides, and tsunamis. The damage to the built environment consisting of buildings and other structures and the impact on social and economic life can be significant. In the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, the government conducted an assessment of loss, damage, and the cost of the recovery, taking into consideration the need to build back better and ensure resilience against future events. We have reviewed the existing building codes and approved the building regulations of 2022 to guide our reconstruction efforts. Food security continues to be a major priority for the government through the Ministry of Blue and Green Economy, Agriculture and National Food Security. Earlier in March, the Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Fidel Grant, declared Dominica on the right track where food security is concerned. The issue of food security has been a major concern globally with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and the Ukraine-Russian invasion. This week, Prime Minister Honor Burusvas Kerit will attend the Agri Investment Forum and Expo in Georgetown, Guyana. He will be accompanied by the Minister for Blue and Green Economy, Agriculture and National Food Security Honor Fidel Grant, and Minister for Trade, Commerce, Entrepreneurship, Innovation, Business and Export Development Honor Ian Douglas, Mr. Hilary Schillingford of Salisbury, Mr. Dells Warrington of Calibishi and Commercial Farmers. The forum will be hosted by the Government of Guyana and the CARICOM Secretariat and will be held under the theme Investing in Vision 25 by 2025. From Thursday, May 19 to 21st, issues linked with the investment of agriculture and food production, including cross-border investment, climate smart agriculture and related infrastructural development, will be addressed. According to a statement released on the Prime Minister's Facebook page, the meeting is timely for Dominica as government intensifies efforts to locally build stronger value chain relationships, promote food security and sustainable growth in the agriculture sector. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. 2022 is census year. Be ready to give your full participation. Hey, hey. I happy I was there to take part in the Tula census, is we? They have come a long way in how they collecting data. I even see they're using tablets now. That is something else, we? This is really the technology edge. Kisa Udila, say that again. Don't worry, Taru. When your time comes, we'll answer on your behalf. 2022 is census year. Be ready to give your full participation. For more information, please contact the Central Statistics Office of Dominica or follow us on Facebook. Welcome back. In this edition of In-Depth, Minister for Planning, Economic Development, Climate Resilience, Sustainable Development, Renewable Energy, Dr. Honorable Vince Henderson completed a tour of the first of two well parts being constructed as part of the 10 megawatt domestic geothermal plant in Loder. Julian Morris has more 
in this report. The thermal development project promises to transform the landscape in the Rosa Valley. Work towards the establishment of a new well is progressing satisfactorily, but before that happens, a lot of preparatory work is required on this acre of land. This well pad is supposed to be constructed at 4,800 square meters, or about 51,000 square feet in area. It is the site for the drill um, contractor who will be drilling the well. Um, inside this fence area is where the drill is going to be. I'll show you the, the um, drill pipe to start with. Um, to my left, we have one tank has been constructed and another one is being constructed. Those are for environmental reasons, to make sure that the um, water, the runoff from the well pad is first um, degreed, all grease, all um, grease, all oil is removed, and all um, sediment is removed before it goes back into the environment. So that's why those two tanks are being built. Um, to my right, where the excavator is, is what the drill contractor calls a mud pit. Um, everything that is drilled, all the, the waste, goes back into that mud pit to be purified and taken out of sight for environmental reasons. So. That, in a nutshell, is the scope. Mr. LeBlanc says between the Loda location and Wallhouse, close to 40 workers are employed on this project. He is confident the preparatory works could be completed within six weeks' time. We have brought this pad to the level it needs to be. Um, I would say 98% of where it's supposed to be in terms of level. Um, this area, as you would imagine, was just a sloping piece of land. Um, so we have backfill close to 40 feet high and the excavation is about 40 feet as well um, to get that level pad. Um, in terms of time frame, we're hoping that may not be the critical path, but we still want to run with it. Um, we're hoping to finish the well cellar in another two, three weeks. And once we have finished that, we can start finishing here. We would finish this tank in another three weeks as well. So in another four weeks, we should be in earnest starting to do the final backfilling of here, um, making here impermeable and backfilling it. Um, there's a concrete section to put there, which would probably take two weeks. So I would say in another six weeks, we should be close to finishing the entire area. This engineering is essentially preparing the site to facilitate the drilling company. The Honorable Minister for Planning, Economic Development, Climate Resilience, Sustainable Development, Renewable Energy, Dr. The Honorable Vince Henderson says he expects drilling to take place before the end of the year. We know that right now because of the, the effect of the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the, the war in Ukraine, we have seen impact on shipping and, and the actual mobilization of contractors to execute work. So we expect to see the drilling company on site and what we're doing here, well, soon, and what we're doing here is to prepare everything. So the access road, we have quite a bit of work to do still. And even outside of this preparation of the, the, um, the well pads, we also have to improve the access because we'll, we'll be bringing some pretty heavy equipment here to drill. The drilling contractor would um, specify everything that you see here. So besides being the international standards for what's required of drilling, including environmental and technical standards, the size and the dimensions and everything, layout will be specified by the drilling contractor and the owner's engineer, of course. Um, once we get there, like um, Mr. Libla said, something similar to what you see at um, WWP1, where we started today, will be what will happen here. So you'll have the, the cellar, which he spoke of earlier, is where the actual wellhead will be. And probably you could have a look this pipes you see at the surface. Um, this well will be a directional well that will be that's designed for 1,700 meters. So that's over 5,000 feet, close to 6,000 feet. So, technical, so that's what's going to happen. That, miles up, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, and that is designed so that you get to the geothermal resource so you can extract as necessary. The, the design is the same for the reinjection. When you send back the resource, you send it as deep as possible so you could maintain your reservoir pressure and keep your reservoir basically pressured so you would be, you would not deplete your resource over time. So you sustain your resource by re-injecting. But the designs of the 
production well here and the reinjection well, which is part of this project, which East Engineering has, has to contract, construct as well, uh, as similar in design and, and um, engineering in terms of the specifications. While geothermal energy will lead to more affordable energy for consumers and manufacturing, the process itself is not easy. This is actually drilling almost a mile down. This is not easy stuff. So we, have, we are fortunate that we are so far ahead. I mean, Dominica is the most advanced in developing geothermal in any small island in the world, any sovereign small island state in the world. And this has been a, a, a very challenging project, but it's something that will, will help Dominica to transform its energy sector, but also economic development and to ease up the pressure to our households. All over the world, people are, are worried about the cost of, of energy. And now there's a bigger move towards producing your own energy. And we see that happen and what's happening in Europe now. So this project is really at a stage where it is just moving towards the finish line because we, are doing, we have done most of the difficult work. Over the years, we have tested the, the resource. We know it's there and that's why we are now preparing to drill another well right here on this site. And we'll be drilling another well lower down. I'm not sure if we'll have time to visit that site but we will be drilling this well so that we can have more steam, which will, is basically what we'll be using to generate the power. So in order to generate the power, we need to get the steam. In order to get the steam, you need to go down almost a mile down. I mean, imagine walking a mile. So can you imagine drilling a mile? So this is not something we could call a guy down the road and tell him, come drill this for us. So we have, we have a, a drilling company out of Iceland and the Icelandic companies have tremendous experience for decades in this technology so they will be on site later this year to actually drill the well once that is done we will be moving to the next stage which is actually the construction of the power plant that is also a very complex process it will take some time but fortunately as i said we are ahead thanks julian for that report Prime Minister Donna Beresvels Kerit says government will continue to make great use of the Citizenship by Investment Program, CBI, before it comes to an end, as he believes all things may come to an end someday. He made these remarks while speaking on the Next Level show on Tuesday evening. This as the Ministry of Tourism, International Transport and Maritime Initiatives has seen significant development projects from this program over the years, to include the construction of numerous hotels. This serves as part of government's strategy to increase foreign exchange in Dominica. CBI Dominica has funded many projects which play a significant part in Dominica's economic growth. Despite the economic challenges posed on the world by the global pandemic, much national development projects, including these hotels, continue to move at a steady pace with the support of the Citizenship by Investment Program. We've been investing the CBI funds to sustain our development thrust and to create independent sources of revenue earning, job creation, sustainable job creation for the country. So we invest in infrastructure, better roads. Better roads mean better commerce, better transportation, better access, safety. We invest in our resilient building, ensuring we build homes for people so that we, when you have access to a home that is not leaking, comfortable, you have light, you have water. Prime Minister Skerritt believes the hotel constructions will take Dominica to a next level. We invest in tourism, the hotels. And you know, the World Bank did a study. I believe it's the World Bank or the Central Bank, one of them. That they would talk, they were looking at the hotels that we were, we had already built, Jungle Bay and and the and the, um, the Kempinski and and, and 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 others, and they're saying with these hotels, and they anticipate that we could have revenues to into the treasury of what forty million dollars every year, U.S. dollars. That's revenue to the treasury. That, that, that doesn't include, you know, the impact on, 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 on the stakeholders. And this is what we're seeking to create, that we have hotel rooms that we can now promote Dominica. People can come in, 
jobs, cre jobs created. Farmers can sell the, the, the produce. Fishermen can sell the produce. We can have more people in, 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 in spa treatment and massages and, 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 and the associated services and amenities. Prime Minister Skerritt also seek to correct the rumours surrounding the halt of the Marriott Hotel in Portsmouth and other hotels. There's a lot of work taking place on, on, on the Marriott Hotel in, in Portsmouth. Significant amount of work is, is taking place. The um, Hilton, that's in Salisbury, mm -hmm. significant work has, has, has happened there and continue to happen. And never, work never stop. Secret Bay, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Jungle Bay has been completed. Okay? Um... Ocean Edge is under construction. The 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 one in the valley in in in, in Loda mm -hmm. is under construction. Meanwhile, this month the Ministry of Tourism celebrates Tourism Awareness Month, and Minister of Tourism Honorable Dennis Charles hopes to shed light on the many initiatives undertaken by the ministry. This month, and all the year throughout. Let us make sure that tourism is everybody's business and that we do all in our power to play our part. The government is investing in the success of the tourism industry through infrastructure projects such as site enhancements, including the cable car to the Boiling Lake, new Champagne Beach facility, and the Rosa Old Market Square. Additionally, advancement of the cruise ship pier and our flagship project, the International Airport. We want to ensure that you as tourism practitioners pay attention to, the, to detail and make sure that our guests have the best time possible on Dominica and pledge to return again. Minister responsible for planning, the Honorable Dr. Vince Henderson, says government consulted widely with the stakeholders in the construction sector before the newly revised building code was announced. The planning minister says the impact of Hurricane Maria on the island's housing stock was instructive and informed discussion and the overall process towards new building codes and regulations. Post Hurricane Maria, there were a number of consultations. There were discussions with the Builders Association, the Architects, the Engineers Association. We had the input of the OECS Commission we were fortunate to have the support of the UN, UNDP in particular, engineers without border who were on island assisting us in seeking to, to rebuild. Um, of course, the physical plan division played a very important role. So, so we were able to evaluate the impact and to look for the lessons to be learned. And, and those fed into what we now have as the new building regulations because we, we really took the time and to have broad discussions there was various cross sections of the society private sector homeowners and to really hear from them and to understand and to to sort of investigate on site because it was fresh mm -hmm. you know the impact was there and out of that came about some guidelines and emanating out of that are the regulations the building code serves to strengthen the physical planning act which covers construction of homes and other infrastructure of varying dimensions. The code really, as we said, it is sort of strengthening, it's strengthening the act by outlining guidelines that are some of which were already in existence. But because of what we learned, the lessons learned from Hurricane Maria and, and the debates that have been going on over years, even prior to Hurricane Maria, it was felt the need to, to have more stringent regulations for different types of construction. So what the code does is that it classifies mm -hmm. developments. So we have sections 1 to 17 that speaks to really this, that speak to, to different types of buildings. So for example, there are buildings over 2,500 square feet, commercial buildings, multifamily buildings, residential, well, apartment type construction, industrial buildings because again you may have hazards that are part of the operations and therefore the requirements are, are slightly different. Uh, institutional buildings, hospitals, health centers, schools. So there are regulations that deal to that. Buildings on slopey areas exceeding 30, I think a 30 degree slope. Again they will require a certain type of building and, and certain type 
of um, regulations to be observed, there are also the smaller buildings, those that fall below 2,500 square feet and are not commercial buildings, industrial, institutional, or multifamily family buildings or multi-story buildings that would again have to comply for different sets of requirements. Standards under the new building code are more stringent for institutional, industrial, and commercial buildings. There is a need for approval by an architect or an engineer for the plans. So you cannot submit a plan for those types of buildings without the approval of the, an architect or without a submission from an architect or an engineer. But those that are smaller, there are requirements for the type of materials used, basic, basic requirements where the beams are placed, where the columns are placed, so the, the size and strength and all of those things that have already been around for quite a while, but because of the lessons learned, we have improved them. So it's an improvement over what existed. That's all for the English version of the news. Julian Morris is next with Creole Highlights. <laughs> Bienvenue pour Nouvelle en Creole. Non moi c'est Julian Morris. Premier ministre Roosevelt Skerritt fait annoncement que le gouvernement jamais été ouvert en place pour les gens qui ont bâti Kai. Dominic a déjà réglé le département planning avec les affaires construites Kai, mais le gouvernement a fait plus, fait plus certain que le pays a été bâti Kai pour que ça ait du bout en mauvais temps. Cyclone Maria fait un pile dommage sur Kai, Dominic. Kai qui pâté bien bâti, Kai qui a pâté bâti dans une manière qui est solide. Là, il y a ça, le département qui est responsable de faire Kai, qui est à tout le monde qui a bâti Kai pour qu'il règle le travail en manière gouvernement voulait faire ça, en manière gouvernement commandé. Si même qui passe, le gouvernement a ouvert trois écoles, neuf trois écoles, à dans Delis, Monjon avec Marigot. Toutes ces écoles sont bien bâti en ligne avec le gouvernement. C'est l'école Salah, c'est aussi, quand aussi servi, qu'on uh, place Mounsa Soukoué Koyo, uh, pas d'un mauvais temps, qu'on cyclone. Tout de suite, le gouvernement qui est ouvert à l'école Premier Grand B, qui uh, est nommé après défunt Edward Regist. Le gouvernement Canada avec la Banque de Développement Kwaibla, qui uh, a travaillé ensemble avec le gouvernement Dominique pour établir uh, ces projets Salah. Premier ministre Roosevelt Skerritt dit uh, après dommage que cyclone Maria Pochiwe, le gouvernement a fait une détermination pour construire le pays de manière qui est plus fort. Le ministère du gouvernement Vince Henderson, responsable du département planning, il dit qu'il est d'accord uh, pour faire ce WEG Sala qui a venu en place l'année Sala. En d'autres nouvelles, six premières écoles participent à une compétition pour épeler Mokoyol mercredi à Kai Alliance Française. Première école Atkinson, Baroness Patricia Scotland, Christian Union, Penville, St. Luke avec Woodford Hill participent à une compétition Salah. La compétition Salah est organisée par le ministre de l'Éducation, comité pour études créoles et puis division Kilti. Ça, c'est la dixième année que la compétition Salah est appelée Mo Creole Cap en place. Le comité pour études créoles a commencé la compétition Salah dans l'année 2010 pour encourager les enfants à l'école épelé avec écrit à parler le langage créole là première l'école première l'école pébouche j'ai gagné une compétition ça là six fois les autres l'école j'ai gagné aussi à parmi eux première l'école saint jo guambe colihu ebeniza avec saint lux nous ca encourager um, ces uh, enfants qui ca qui à l'école pour parler pour um, apprendre le créole, pour uh, ça parler et épeler avec le créole. Et nous croyons que la compétition a encouragé ces jeunes monde pour um, parler le créole plus. Et nous avons, comme c'est dit, um, nous avons espéré um, que l'école primaire et l'école secondaire qui est une classe pour le euh, langage créole dans l'école. Mais la euh, compétition, ça là, est bon parce qu'il peut encourager ces enfants-là pour parler euh, créole. 
si pour pour compétition l'année ça là qu'a sorti hors de ministère d'éducation division Kilti uh, commission francophonie nationale alliance française uh, Creole Heartbeat Jazz Fine Foods et puis Flow dernière compétition en te point place en l'année 2021 uh, yo pas tienne pièce compétition à dans l'année 2020 pour la petite Covid Avec finalement, mam parlement pour Guambe Vince Henderson dit qui projet chimé avec Kaik Adam à Paris Guambe qu'a fait pour Gwe. Ministre Henderson dit est bien encouragé avec Sipoa Ikatwape pour ses projets sala. Ministre Henderson dit uh, travaille à sous chimé Macaton avec Mopo qu'a fait pour Gwe. Magwe il te kevle ouais au marché avancer plus vite. Monsieur Henderson dit qu'il est né un morceau chimé qui a coûté un million de dollars et demi. Public Works a responsable morceau travail sala avec l'agence sala qui sorti hors Union Européenne, c'est la European Union. Ministère dit qu'il a déjà discuté à progrès travail là avec un plan pour pousser aller devant plus vite. Monsieur Henderson dit il bien plaît que chimé sala que ont des plusieurs habitants spécialement habitant à sous un macaton il dit à sous chimé mopo yo ka adressé ça yo ka ki ça c'est la chimé en plus mauvais euh, tout ça c'est pour uh, ces habitants là plus mais chimé pour habitation yo à sous affaire kaya gobé monsieur Henderson dit yo j'a pour assistance pour plusieurs familles il dit yo ka assister spécialement moun ki uh, tapé kayo dommagé par cyclone maria Développement Senta, c'est un ces gros projet à qui M. Henderson dit qui a capoté le cas pour mon Dubic qui a resté en Senta déjà, mais il a perdu le cas pendant le cyclone Maria. Avec ça, c'est tout pour Nouvelle Acréole pour aujourd'hui. Donc, moi, c'est Julian Morris. Au revoir. Thank you, Julian. And now your weather update. relatively dry atmosphere can be expected during the next 24 hours to 48 hours as a high pressure system has established itself across the area. Breezy conditions will be maintained. An increase in dust haze concentration is expected to be maintained over the island during the next 24 to 48 hours, resulting in a reduction in visibility. People with respiratory sensitivities should take the necessary precautions to avoid complications. Moderate seas are anticipated during the next 24 hours with waves peaking to seven feet in the eastern coastal waters. Small craft operators and sea bathers on the eastern coast are advised to exercise caution. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I am Aliyah Martin. Thanks for watching and remember, stay safe.